The Small Business Show, episode 286 for Wednesday, July 22nd, 2020. And welcome to the Small Business Show. I know it's been a long time since we've introduced the show this old way. School. It's We're old, going old school. school today. It's true. It's true. It's just me. It's just me and Shannon. And and as far as as far as me, well, I'm Dave Hamilton here in Durham, New Hampshire. And I'm Shannon Jean in Lafayette, California. How's it going, man? It goes. And uh, if this is your first time visiting us here at the Small Business Show, we are the show by for and about small business owners. And, uh, and today it's just the two of us. Well, I say it's just the two of us, Shannon. It's all of us here listening, it is. but, uh, but we have no guests yeah, today. I, yeah. I've been looking forward to it. You know, it's, I love having the guests. I mean, I always learn so much, but it's kind of nice once in a while just to get together and talk and pr some topics that, uh, you know, we've had on, on yeah. the side, if you will. And yeah, um, for sure. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's pretty good. cool. Hey, we have it, we have before, two sponsors today. I just oh, wanted yeah. to, to note, yeah, yeah. directmailmac.com slash SBS and smilesoftware.com slash podcast. So we've, we've got uh, PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro from Smile. We'll talk about why you want to visit those URLs in yeah. uh, in a bit here. We, you know, we say this often, but but our our sponsors, our our job when we take on a sponsor is to sort of whet your appetite to encourage you to go visit their site and learn more, whether or not you buy that's between you and them a hundred percent, but it's our job to, to tell you about them. And if it's something that, that seems like it might make sense to you, go to their site, check out more. That actually really helps us, believe it or not. So I, yeah, I, I just yeah, wanted to kind of lay that out there. We'll talk more specifically about these sponsors later in the episode, but we'll get into some stuff here now. First. Cool. So, yeah. Hey, before we get into it, we're, today we're going to talk all about action and you know, we've kind of been on this taking action uh, uh, kick lately. We added a new question to our interview thing, which I think is great. Got yeah. some good tips on there, but let, let's talk about our, this new business that we're starting the sure. publishing business, right? Yep. Uh, if you if you've been listening to the show, you've heard us talk about our uh, small business guides that we've been you know we released the first one oh um, I don't know a couple months ago all about mistakes yep and you know made it totally just like it's perfect because we made a mistake when we were <laughs> releasing it <laughs> and uh, you know really as, as far as we know we've only made one I'm sure there yeah. are more. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. And so we realized we needed to learn a lot about this publishing uh, small business world. And we've brought in a coach that's helping us and we've relaunched the uh, uh, mistakes and you can get a copy. We're running a promo for 99 cents. I'm not here to pitch the book. I just want to talk about it. But if you'd like to get a copy, uh, you can go to businessshow.co slash guides and you'll see some links up there. Well, but. And the reason we're doing this promo, I mean, I think it's worth talking about. It, you, like, like you said, we hired this coach to help us become bestsellers on Amazon. Yeah. And so we are, we are, we are in that process. And part of that process is getting people to review the book. And so we needed, we wanted to make it as inexpensive as possible for all of the folks that were, uh, that we've got reviewing the book now. So that's why it's 99 cents, but you get to benefit from that. Uh, we're also doing all sorts of ads and different kind of coordinated promotions. It's a, it's a multi-pronged attack right now. And that 99 cent price point really helps to drive sales, which will help drive our, our uh, ratings up. And that's what we're after here right now. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's been cool. an interesting I, I, thing. Yeah. It has, it has. I've, I've learned a, tr a tremendous amount, which is great because, you know, you don't want to bring in a professional to help you and not learn. And oh. so we've had, you know, it's really fascinating to see and and to learn what to look for and how to tweak it and how the data works. And, you know, uh, I love about our coach, the first thing, you know, when she looked at our mistakes book, she said, Oh, you know, your cover is crap. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, and, and I was like, oh, wait, I designed that, you know, and, and, and even though we both <laughs> liked it so much, it didn't and, matter. Yeah. And she showed us, she says, well, go look at all the bestsellers. And I, we looked at them all and she says, do any of them look like your book? And I said, Nope. No. She's like, more more specifically, does your book like it look like it belongs yes. here? And it was like, oh, yes. no, no, it does not. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. 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 So it, it's fascinating. It, I guess it, the thing I want to point out is whatever you're interested in, you know, taking that deep dive into it, you there, there's just the opportunity to learn a tremendous amount. And there is, uh, 
there are like in this case, there are millions of books up on Amazon that just sit there and yeah. do nothing. And, yeah. and Amazon owns, I think, between sixty and seventy percent of the self-publishing business. And and our, we're going to get it on some other platforms as well. But right now, we're trying to master this one um, and uh, watching it go up the chart. So yeah, I'd love to have your involvement. Love to get your review and and your feedback. Um, the book is essentially has some information about mistakes Dave and I made and overcome in our career, but it is really an aggregate of some of our favorite uh, guests and the mistakes that they made. We ask each guest, you know, what's the best mistake that you've made? Something that taught you the most and stuck with you. Uh, it's kind of been become a hallmark uh, of the small business show. And we share those stories with that and you know, we kind of synopsis and put those things together. So yeah, I had a great time making it. And when you buy that book, you also get, uh, an opportunity to get the the next book in the small business guide series, which is all about partnerships. And there's a link to that up there too. Cool. Yeah, yeah. no, it's been fun. Uh, like you said, it, it, you said something really, I think really important. If you hire somebody to help you, you really want to make sure you learn something. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it sounds so obvious when you say it, but us small business owners, we, you know, we're convinced that we can do everything. And, and yeah. at times we need to really lean on, on being convinced of that because sometimes many times we're the only ones around to do anything. So we have to believe that we can do everything. Uh, but it doesn't mean we're necessarily the best. And when, when you are in a position where you can, you know, afford to bring someone else in hiring someone as an employee or as a contractor or as a coach, you really want to make sure they're better at the thing that you're hiring them, yeah. them to do than you like that. Yeah. It, like I, it, 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 I heard somebody say it, I'm going to paraphrase it the wrong way, but it was, you know, like B players hire C players. Oh, that's true. And a players hire other A players. Right. But yeah. you, you rarely find a B player that hires an A player because they're afraid of someone who's, who's better than them. And I don't really think it's an A, B or C player thing. I think it's that confidence thing in, in your, in yourself and your business. And it's really hard to say, I'm going to give this portion of my business over to someone else who knows more than I did. And they might tell me I did some things wrong in the past. Yeah, for sure. When you zoom out, of course, the goal is you want them to tell you what you did wrong so that you can do it better. Like that's why you're paying them, or at least hopefully that's one of the reasons you're paying them. But, uh, but it, it can be hard for the, you know, for the ego and, and all of those things to, to allow yeah, you that. Have, you in. have to humble yourself. You, you know, have to and, humble and yourself. That's it. it, it yeah. That's, especially if you've had some success and you kind of swashbuckled your way through a lot of this stuff and they're just like, <laughs> I like you that know, term. <laughs> I got to figure it out. Da, 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 da. Yeah. You know, and, and so, I mean, I, I, I face this all the time. It's like, well, I, I can, I can figure this out. I, I've got confidence in myself that I yes. know I can figure it out, but of course you can. Yeah. Totally different animal, and I've learned so much uh, in in a sh very short period of time. Believe me, yeah, so that's great. Yeah, that's cool. All right, let's but go hey, through. Today, let's go yeah, through some of these good. favorite actions. You know, we like you said, we came up with this question. I, you know, I, I I was listening back to some of our interview shows, and I thought, man, like these are there's great content here, but so much of it is sort of in the clouds, right? It's this this sort of nebulous. Um, Feel good, not feel good stuff, but but th but big picture stuff is really what we were learning from people, even with their mistakes. Most of those mistakes were, you know, zoomed out a little bit. And I really thought, man, I like offering people very specific, actionable tips like that's my thing. And so sure. I thought, why don't we ask people to do that? Like, it's not, it's not that the people we bring on the show can't. We just haven't encouraged yeah. them to. And it's been working out amazingly well. But as you pointed out today, Shannon, well, you know, there are there are two other people that might have some actionable tips to share. And we haven't really done that yet. So here we are. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's, that's good stuff. Uh, so how about I start? I'll do one. Please do. do one. Then. Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. We'll do a couple my app, and then, yes. and then we'll, okay. uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about our sponsors and then we'll do yeah, a couple perfect. more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Cool. One of my favorite things to do is, you know, just get up and walk around that this action thing is, uh, and it meant to really check in with your team, check in with your employees, find out how they're doing ask them engagement, you know, do they need anything? And one of the things I, I always love to ask, and you can't ask it all the time, but, but once in a while you walk up and say, Hey, 
I'd like you to think about something that could make your work more enjoyable, more accurate, more productive. Mm. Um, because a lot of times people just get kind of into the mode, especially maybe a mid-level or lower level, and, and I don't say that in a derogatory fashion, but sure. just maybe an entry-level employee, let's use that term. Um, and they're not thinking maybe uh, that you're open to hearing their idea or something, especially if they just started. And so I'd love to ask them that. What would make your work better? You know, And just tell them to think about it. Don't put them on the spot right then. Uh, and just tell them, Hey, next time I check in with you, you know, give me some feedback or if you want to send an email. And then I like to wait a few days and when you're walking around again and ask them for an answer or make, if they don't have one, just say, Hey, write it down or send me an email. Um, and then I, then I think it's critically important to, to implement it, follow up, do something. Mm. So if they say, you know, I found this tool, um, I'll give you an example in the uh, repair business when glass became just such a critical part of our business. Uh, one employee kind of came across this this tool that was not designed to do what we you know we're going to do with it, but it worked so well. And then for a while, we shared this tool because they were kind of expensive and everything else. And one guy was like, well, he, when I asked him that question, he said, well, we, we each need one of these. You know, he's like, we can, we could increase our work this much. Everything. I was like, okay, let's do it. And so everybody got one of these tools at their station. I think they were 500 bucks or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Maybe more. And, uh, it, it did. Everybody felt better. They weren't waiting for certain things. And, and, uh, and I think what you're trying to do is you want to create a kind of a take action culture and have them get in on it. You, you, you want yes. the action to come from both ways. It's way more powerful when it comes from your your team, even if you're nudging them in there. So yeah. my first one is get up and walk around and, and ask that question. I like that. And, and you know, this can very easily be impl implemented virtually or at a distance, right? Like it, yeah, if, oh, of if, course. if your company, well, I think every company right now is operating in virtual yeah. some at some level. Most companies, not every company. But, um, but, you know, check in yeah, with your point. people, just point. ping them casually, you, you know, just like not at a staff meeting, not at a scheduled meeting, but just a, you know, Hey, I was thinking about you today. Um, what, what would it take? You know, if I asked you, what would it take to make your work better? What would you say? You know, like g give it arm's length and say, think about it for a couple of days. And then, and then, like you said, come back to them with that, uh, yeah. you, you know, a few days later. And, just and I like lines of communication open. Right? Yeah. I liked your. Uh, you know, your follow-up that you have to implement. And, and I would, I would add to that either implement what they suggest or empower them to implement yeah. it, you know, but, but make that happen immediately. Uh, it's great if you can do it right, right on that, in that same conversation or on that same call, whatever it is, you know, when somebody says, I really wish that, you know, we were doing this with the way our YouTube channel works. And it's like, okay, well, yeah. you know, why don't you, we don't, we carve some time out of your schedule to do that and, and maybe move some things around so that you can start doing that right now. How, how does that sound? You know, That's that good. kind of thing. It, like, it, oh, great. And I, and I like yeah. the, you, the idea of, you can also kind of focus them in areas that, I mean, my, my, Example is really broad, sure. but, but like you say, hey, what could we do uh, if it's the digital marketing guy? What could we do on the website yeah. that would make things better oh, for you? Or yeah, what could we do on the sure. YouTube channel that would? So, because you if, you can't let them make these suggestions and then just blow them off. No, right? you, you better have a good reason if you can't implement it. Right? It's like, oh, like yes. in my case, oh, you know what? We can't buy twenty of these tools right now, but let's let's buy five, you yeah. know, or let's buy 10 and then next quarter we'll buy another or whatever, whatever know? it is. Yeah. But yeah, have a yeah. good cool. reason. Uh, and it might be the kind of thing, like if somebody says like in your case, okay, we need to buy, you know, everybody should have one of these, their station, like, okay, let me look at the budget. I'll get back to you. I'm going to come back to you by, by Thursday and we're going to have yeah. this conversation again. And and then that's a deliverable on you. Right. So they, they, they yeah. know that, okay, yep. He's taking a look and, and this isn't an off the cuff decision, but you know, taking it seriously and coming back and, and all that. So, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's good. Right on. All right. You're up, man. All right. I'm up. Uh, I'm going to save my favorite one for uh, for later here in the show. And okay. and what's interesting is you and I did not coordinate on these. So it's entirely possible that either one of us will will uh, will. Yeah. Preempt the other guy. But one of my favorite things to do, and I do it every day. And it was a tip given to me by a very wise business person, a.k.a. Mr. Shannon Jean here many, uh -oh. many years ago. 
Check your bank account balances every <laughs> single day. It, Someone else told me that too. I, I I can't take credit for that. Hey, that one of my <laughs> but that, that's I, how it I goes. We just pass. It I along. live it religiously, man. Religiously, <laughs> yeah. And I will tell you when you shared that with me, it was like what a crazy idea. Like I, you know, I was maybe looking at the bank accounts once a week or you know whenever I needed to, but not every day. But you know, th- a, another smart person said that which is monitored is managed. Yes. And that's what happens here is you really get to start knowing where the health of your business uh, is cash, right? Like unless your business is, is huge, then the health of your business might be something different. Like, I don't know if Apple obsesses about how much cash they have, but I will tell you, somebody's thinking about it all the time because if they weren't, they wouldn't have so much cash, Right. Like, like these things do feed themselves. So, um, you know, checking that bank account balance every day is, is a huge thing and you can set it up to be, to, to, you know, have your bank notify you now, usually with the the app or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I've tried that. I'm not sure I like that. I'm still, my inner jury is out on, on whether it's better to have that information pushed at you or if I've got to go pull it because I think yeah. there's something about going and pulling it because if it's pushed to me, I can see it on my watch and be like, yep. Okay. I see what the number is. Great. Now I can move on with my day. There's not a whole lot of intention involved in reading a, you know, interruption notification like that. Whereas, I would agree. Yeah. yeah. So and, and, and you can't see the subtle, like the check in the balance is paramount, but you also get exposed to things. I, I get exposed to things that you might otherwise miss. Yes. If you do, because I like to look at the quick summary and, you know, it's on your phone. I'm li- this literally takes yeah. five minutes, right? Yeah. And if, if everything looks normal, but if something looks weird, it prompts you to go ask, you know, meet your bookkeeper or whatever. Hey, what whatever. Is that? What's, yep. what's that charge? And, yep. you know, that kind of stuff. So yep. for cool. sure. Yeah, no, it, it really, it's a huge thing. And if I get, for whatever reason, if I've got stuff going on and I'm out of the habit of it, if I go two or three days without checking the balance, I suddenly start to feel lost now. It's like, I don't know where my business is. Like I, I need to, you know, get a handle on it. Where are we? Okay. That's where we are. Okay, good. That's where I thought we were. Or mm, no, that's not, wait, what happened? Like you said, yeah. why did things change dramatically in wonder, it, you know, it, positive or negative? That's a question you want to have answered. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. No, that's great. Yeah. That's a good one. I like it. All right. I want to, um, I want to talk about our two sponsors right now, if that's all right with you, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Let's hear Gene. It. Okay. Yeah. Our first sponsor for today is man. Talk about a tip that's good for your business. It's direct mail, Mac.com slash SBS. And the tip is use email marketing more in your business. That is th- like, Email, I know we think of it as like this, so many things have replaced it, messages and Slack and all that stuff. Email is something people still read. It's still one of the best ways to market whatever it is you're doing. Once you've got a customer's email address and you know what they're interested in, you know what they're doing, you can now target them and remind them of the things or tell them about new things that you've got going on in your business. And There's nothing better than running a native app on your Mac to do that. The web-based interfaces, they they get a little weird. This lets you manage it in one spot and you can create and send great looking email newsletters with direct mail. I've done it. We use it in a couple of our businesses here and it's just a fantastic tool because direct mail is built specifically for the Mac. You get all your email marketing done in half the time because It takes advantage of all the great Apple technology, you know, and love. And what's cool is they've got two pricing plans. You can either pay as you go, like buying postage stamps that last forever. Or if you're sending regularly, which you probably should be, but you know, whatever works for your business is fine. If you're sending regularly, then you can buy a monthly subscription and send as much as you want. Right. So 
there's two ways to go. You're not locked in unless you unless it makes sense for your business to be locked into that monthly subscription. And even then, it's just month to month. Uh, but you, so you're never really locked in. Uh, and you're you're never paying for something that you're not using because you get to pick whether you're buying those posted stamps, uh, you know, or buying the monthly subscription. So and if you're a geek, you can actually go use direct mail with your own mail servers and all that stuff. But that's probably beyond what most of us. I don't even want to do that because running a mail server, I'd rather let the people at direct mail figure out how to run the mail server that's sending my emails and because they've already figured it out and they know what they're doing. So. Send your first email campaign today with a free download of direct mail. And because you're a small business show listener, you can save 10% off of all full feature plans. So head over to directmailmac.com slash SBS and see how they can help your business grow. And of course, our thanks to direct mail for Mac. Our next sponsor is PDF pen and PDF pen pro because PDF pen pro and PDF pen 12.1 have arrived. This is the latest version of the ultimate tool for editing PDFs on the Mac. And it now includes even more powerful features, including page label support in multiple formats for documents. And pro users can even go a step further with the ability to add or edit page labels. And that's in addition to all the great PDF pen 12 features that they brought up, which are the magnifier window that lets you zoom in on a document and you can even zoom across documents. It's really cool. You can customize your compression settings so that you're not having to take the PDF that PDF pen creates and run it through something else. You can do it all now in PDF pen and pick how you want things compressed so that you're getting the file quality and size balance that you want. And now they've got stationary with new paper colors for custom page designs and all kinds of other cool stuff. I use PDF pen constantly for creating and signing contracts with people. It allows me to put, they've got some dynamic stamps that I can put in contracts that make it look a little more official when I put my signature in there. Cause it's got my name and it says approved by, and it's got the date. And then of course I've, I can also put my signature in. I really like the ability to, to enhance it and spruce it up a little bit. A, it makes the contract look a little more professional, but B, it makes me look more professional when I send something out like that. And isn't that the point? So go check it out. Go to smilesoftware.com slash podcast and check out PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro. Our thanks to Smile for sponsoring this episode. Shannon, what's your next tip? My, my next one's all about story. You know, we talk oh. about story all the time, how important it is and everything. And, uh, it, this one's a little tougher, and, it's, and, and I have a tough time with it, too, even though I do like to write, and I write a lot. Uh, but get out there and write a blog post. If you don't have a blog on your website, get one. If you don't write, get someone that works for you to do it. Uh, hire someone to do it, you know, contract, whatever. You, you, you know, get, get your story out there. Write, create some content, share it on Facebook, LinkedIn, and to your other channels. If you don't have a website, if you, you know, service business, I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't have a website, but if you don't, break up these longer blog posts and post them uh, in parts to your Facebook business page, you know, and you can write about anything. You can tell a story about how somebody used your product or your service, share pics of your employees. Uh, I mean, we used to put post photos of our employee lunches every Friday, you know, literally anything. People want to connect with you. The key is to do it on a regular basis, weekly, bi biweekly, whatever, and then share it wide. People want to see it, share photos on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, because people are going to search for your business yeah. or the services and products that you offer. And the more kind of robust library of uh, content you have out there, the more credibility you have, you know, you're around for a long time. They can click an about link. They find you on Facebook. Oh, that comes up in search. Oh, they found you on Instagram. That comes up. What do people say? People are commenting. You, you, you know, there's never been an, uh, a better time to start today to write something. And I'm talking, when I say write something, you don't have to write like a, you know, a, a big long post. This could be one or two paragraphs. And sometimes Shorter is better if you do it on a more regular basis or take that thing you wrote and chop it up and push it out, you know, every few days or yeah. something like that. Um, but that regular production of content that's related to your product, your services, uh, it's really powerful. And the time is now to start. Yeah. 
Yeah, I you know, as someone who has been in charge of publishing a website for now almost 22 years, I am the worst at getting blog posts out. Now, thankfully yeah. the people that work for me are not, so that's really good. You solved that's perfect. That's how you solved it, right? Yeah. yeah, but but here's the thing. Like there are things I know I I should be writing and I hate the word should, but I'll use it I use it against myself here. And the re and, and it's, it's the, I am the worst procrastinator when it comes to writing blog posts, because I, in my head, I think, oh, this is a big fiasco. It's going to take a lot. And the reality is like, I'm a really good writer. Most of us are much better writers than we think we are because we're getting so much practice these days with, between email and social media. I mean, think about how many words you write on Facebook a day commenting to people, writing your own posts. I mean, I've seen things, I, I've posted things that I've tapped out on my phone that are like, you know what? This is really well written. Like I, I care about it. I edit it and I did it on my phone in four minutes. And it's like, you know, that could have easily been just a blog post for me. And now instead yeah. of, instead of giving Facebook my content, which is what happens when I post there, I can give it to me. And so Think about those things when you're doing that. In fact, here's a brain hack. Start your blog post as a Facebook post and then just copy the text and paste it on your own blog instead or in both like places it. if you want. Right. But but yep. it is not nearly as time consuming or involved as I think it is. And my guess is that I'm not alone in this. There might be some of you out there that, that sort of, you know, get yourself into the same scenario where like, Oh, I don't, that's such a, it's a blank slate. Uh, you right. know, there's so much well, to well, do. It, oh. Yeah. It, yeah. And one of the things that really held me back, uh, on creating content for a long time was I was always paranoid about my grammar. I, I know yes. I'm a decent writer, but you know, guys like you, Dave, are always calling out that I know. damn Oxford I'm, comma or whatever. I'm a jackass <laughs> about grammar. Yeah, I know. That's right. <laughs> so I was always there. So I uh, I signed up for this service called Grammarly, which I highly recommend. Um, they should sponsor the show. I talk about it. I frequently. agree. Um, yes. But Grammarly will set you free because it it not only checks your grammar, but it'll check your tone and it, it'll suggest ways to not make sentences so wordy. Uh, I mean, lots of great stuff. And, yep. and it's relatively inexpensive. And if if content is something that you've been struggling with, it can really be a big help. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Cool. All right. So got? this is definitely my current favorite one. And it is, it's a, it's another brain hack. And the, my advice to you, my tip to you is to let your calendar run your life. And by that, I mean, if something is on your calendar, do it and get in the habit of this because once you sort of surrender yourself to letting your calendar drive what you do every day, you now have the ability to decide what future you is going to do. So if that, let's take that blog post, for example. Today, I don't want to write that thing. I got stuff to do. I got this show to record with Shannon Crap, man. I, I, like, I have all the reasons in the world to say, today's not a good day for me to write that blog post. Now, we all know it's going to take me 10 minutes. Like it, Today, it doesn't matter. But if I go put it on my calendar for you know 9, 15 a.m. tomorrow morning to write that blog post, I have just now hacked my own brain because when 9, 10 comes around and I get the alert from my calendar that in five minutes I got to write that blog post, it's like, oh, that's right. I got to write that blog post. It's on my calendar. I've done the same thing with, you know, I like to, I, I, I actually I enjoy riding my bike. We have a great neighborhood to ride around. I can get like a nice half hour ride in. I try to do it just before noontime each day, but you know, 11 AM comes around and it's like, Oh, I got all this other stuff to do. And I wouldn't, I wasn't doing it. And I know it's good for me, but it, it like, it's good for me physically, obviously to get out and work out, sure. but it's also good for me mentally because it becomes that meditative time that we talk about so much. Like, you know, it's where I process things. And so I just put it on my calendar and now it's like, Oh yeah, well, oh, that's right. I got to finish up what I'm, I got to wrap this up because I got a bike ride in, in seven minutes. So, okay. And it's no different than a conference call that, you know, I might have with you. I always said that having a co-host for a podcast gives you the benefit of having a, a, a friction point if you want to delay, cancel, postpone the recording of the episode, right? Because now I have to come to you and say, hey, man, not today. Like, we, we've we done that for yeah, each other, and yeah, it happens. Yeah. Sure, but it's sure. it's Sometimes, not, yeah. Yeah, but it requires a Human little bit far of- Far between. If, yes, but it requires some negotiation. It requires a discussion. And yeah. 
And so I, I have, I have just become completely surrendered to what my calendar says. Now I say completely, there are times where it's like, oh yeah, I'm not going to get that bike ride. Like I got, there's something going on. There's an emergency, something happening. Of course, I know that I'm the one that put it on there. I can take it off. It's okay. Right. But by and large, I would say 80 plus percent of the time, I just follow whatever's on my calendar. And it, that, that ability to dictate what future me is going to do is huge, huge. So I, I, it is my current favorite brain hack, but I mean, I've been employing it for a very long time, but, um, but I forget that I can, that it's one of my tricks sometimes. And like, like I said, with this bike ride thing this summer, it was like, oh, right. I can, I just, just got to put it on my calendar. And then, and then the, the brain hacks already in place. I just, now I'm utilizing it better. So yeah, totally yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I like it. It's good. I like it. That's cool. All right. So mine uh, kind of related to content, but also m more about, uh, representing your business. So okay. there's th it's it's kind of one type of action, but there's three things and I'll, I'll dig into each of them. One is if you don't have a Facebook business page, go create one. It's mm. quick. It's easy. Your customers want to connect with you. The second one, create a LinkedIn page for your business. Uh, again, it's free. People want to find you. A great example of, of a company really, you know, who that hits it out of the park, I think, uh, on their LinkedIn page is Tech Defenders. Uh, and, you know, uh, Gary Von Mir, who we've had on the show, yeah. take a look how they're doing it. They share similar things on their Facebook uh, page, but they, they do it differently on LinkedIn, which I really like. Um, and then lastly, create or claim uh, your Google My Business page. If, you know, It'll, it's already up there if people start leaving reviews and search that anybody can do it, but you need to take control of it if uh, if it's already there or you need to go create it because uh, you want that representation to come up on the side of the search results. Uh, it, again, it's your story. You create that that narrative. Um, get out there and, and create those three uh, pieces of digital real estate that don't cost you anything but a yeah. little bit of your time. Yeah. Really, really important. I like that. Uh, that makes a lot of yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, link up your, your blog posts so that they go to LinkedIn and then uh, make sure that, you know, and, and, and Facebook. And I, I don't think you can do blog posts to Google my business pages, but, but, you know, keep the content flowing to those things. Whenever you've got content coming out on your, on your website, make sure your socials you know, are, are getting that and, and echoing that so that you've yeah. got activity and people see that there's things happening. It makes, think about when you look at a, a business, you know, if you're going to buy from somebody or visit a restaurant or whatever you go to, and you know, you, you wind up finding them somewhere and it might be their website. It might be there, you know, for a restaurant or something, it might be their Yelp listing. And if you have, if you're in a business where it makes sense to have a Yelp listing, I, I would add Yelp to this list for sure. Yeah, for you sure. Know, but, but, you know, wherever it is you find them, you want to see that they haven't, it's just not like crickets and spider webs, you know, in a post from 2007 or 2017 or yeah. something, right? You know, that, you, look, that does the opposite of good, right? Uh, yeah. It's like, eh, I don't know that we yeah. should, what, what else is out there? You know? Yeah. So yeah, that, that's where the benefit comes in of claiming your free digital real estate. Cause it doesn't cost you anything to claim it, but not having it may well cost you. So yeah, I like that yeah. one, man. Yep. Cool. Right on. Uh, I've got, I've, well, I've got many more. I don't know how many more we should each do. I mean, I feel yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. going to do one more. I can do okay. more than yeah. that, but, but uh, th my I'll next do, one, yeah, let's each, we'll each do one more. Okay. My next one is stopped. Stop trusting your memory. Uh, I have an extremely good memory. If you ask me, you know, my credit card numbers, I can read them all off to you. If you ask me for specific pieces of information, I can remember them. I like I'm, I'm gifted that way. It's, and it's awesome. Like I'm super stoked that I have that ability. However, that does not mean that if I have a thought in the moment right now, while we're doing this show, that I am going to remember it at the moment that I need to take action on that thought later. In fact, I can almost guarantee you based on past experience that I will not remember <laughs> right. in that moment or perhaps ever until someone says, Hey, have you ever thought about this? And it's like, you know, I have, but since the moment I thought about it, I have not. So you've got to find ways of capturing the thoughts that you have. And you know, the, the, the in the podcast here, something you turned me on to a long time ago is this glass, 
uh, whiteboard that uh, uh, that uh, I have above my keyboard quart- quartet the, from yeah. quartet. That's right. And, and it's great like. because I can, I can, I can just jot things down on it, but if I'm not doing a podcast, I will capture it either in Evernote or simply putting it on my to-do list. Um, you know, it is, is a great thing. I, I have limited places where I will put things because if you have too many places where you will put things, that's like storing it in your head, right? It's, yeah, it's right. there, but it doesn't mean you're going to stumble across it. Uh, but find systems that work for you for, re, you know, retaining or being reminded of what you, of the, the prior thoughts you had, uh, you still get credit for having the prior thought. There's, there's nothing wrong with capturing it and moving on. Um, and I say that because I've, I've, I've encountered people that are like, Oh no, no, no. I'll remember. I don't need it. It's like, yeah, oh, oh cool. But it's probably false. Um, you know, it's yeah. you, yep. You had the thought, capture it. And then, then you can take action when it's appropriate. And you know, if you combine that with my last tip, now you've got your calendar there. I you have it. the thought, you put it on there. Now you've just given future you a task. You essentially treat with the calendar. You're treating yourself like your own employee, right? You know, it's like, so yeah, there you yeah, go. So really yeah, don't trust your memory. Yep. It's, yeah, it's I love it. It's I, I use the reminders app all day long sure. to help me with that Yeah, because I'm constantly going around, Oh, I got to take care of this or someone will ask me something and uh, you know, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, you know, have try to try to get it to where I'm going to remember the thing and, and using that reminders really helps me a lot. Yeah. It's yeah. Good. Whatever it is that works for you. There's many different systems of it, but yeah, find one. And I would, you know, there's the whole GTD thing and all of that stuff. I don't know too. I know a few, but most business owners, entrepreneurs that I know are not GTD people. Yeah, uh, that's it, funny. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, yeah. They, 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 I, I find a lot of employee type people that are great with GTD, but most business owners I know, are, it just, it, I don't know, maybe it's a mindset thing or something. Find something as it, no more complex than you need uh, is, is really what I would go for. And the reminders app, you know, you're talking about Apple's reminders app, super yeah. simple. I mean, it like arguably yeah, too simple, right? But is it, you know, like, do you need it to do more? Mm, maybe not, you know, like get it simple, complex enough to get all of the things you need and nothing more so that it's not, you want it to work for you. You don't want to work for it. And with GTD, I find like I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly falling behind on the things that I need to do to manage my list. And it's like, no, no, that's not my job. My job is to run my business, not run GTD. So that's, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, I, yeah totally. Yeah. So I'll, I'm going to wrap this up with something a little bit different. I, ha- I have, of course, a bunch of other stuff that we can, <laughs> we could have a whole nother show. Whole but other episode, one of the yep. things that I've, I'm starting to champion and I'm going to do it more on the show. You've you've heard me a little bit uh, in some of the introductions. Is that I'm trying to create a system that we can turn the 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 term small business into a verb, and just like when you go Google something, right? So I'm you know when I say I'm ready to small business, you know that's action. You know I, I'm I want to embrace action all the way around when we're talking about small business because the, just think about the things that you do. And I would challenge all of our listeners and myself and Dave to start thinking of that term small business as as a verb and that yeah. we're gonna always take action. It's just it's just gonna be a you know, we're constantly programming our our brains. And if you think if we think about oh, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm gonna go small business. What are you gonna do? I'm small businessing, you know. Uh, I'm going to teach my my employees to how to small business. So I'm going to go share how to small business on the on the small on business the small show. Small business yeah. show, yeah. But it, it's it's. I think that if we can just get in this mantra of small business, all you know, being all about action. Yeah. We are all going to benefit, and we're all going to be able to share in our mutual success as we just you know continue to embrace action here. And I think that is really going to be a big part of, of what we're going to do here going forward is, is pushing that, uh, that concept. I like it, man. Yeah. Turning yeah, anything too. into a, an action. I, yes. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah. It, it's exactly what we're doing. It's not sitting back on your computer, you know, thinking of ideas, trying to invent the great mousetrap, whatever it's doing the work Yeah, and it's, you know, it's implementing things and looking at ideas and thinking about minimal viable products that we can get out and then iterating, 
right. taking action, iterating over and over. How do we change it? How do we change it? You know, we all know people that have been waiting for the home run their whole life and talking about how they're going to, you know, make millions and do this and do that. Well, that's great. And that's wonderful them. And I wish them the best of luck. And sometimes that happens. Yes. But most of the time when, when you make that million dollars, it happens in, in retrospect, you're like, Oh, look what happened. Like we, we weren't focused on just collecting this big pile of money. We were focused on driving something forward. And in the, in the, in the path the, you know, the, the cash generation machine, the wealth generation machine starts to grow and starts to do its job, but you're driving every single day. you like you said, you're not sitting back, letting the machine go. Although I, I mean, I have times where I dream of maybe that would actually be yeah. a really well, nice some thing. Of it, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but once that, once you do, once some of your systems do get automated, build new systems. Then yeah. You're developing more. Okay. Now it's time to small business again. How do yes. I add this? How do we do this? How do we grow this? And I would argue that if, if you haven't been hitting, not to focus on baseball metaphor, it's on, it's on my head because it's on now again, you know, uh, it's, is baseball. I, I don't follow baseball. Is it, is baseball happening? Yeah. Now? They're just doing some pre stuff yet. Oh, to, interesting. My, my wife's all excited because the giants are playing the Dodgers, I think Thursday. Wow. Or, 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 hey, so, look, yeah. the world is moving forward. This is good. Totally, yeah. There's nobody in the fans, but they of are course. piping in no, noise, which is kind of surreal, but oh, that's uh, weird. Uh, huh. Yeah, it is weird, but maybe it, they could put, put uh, microphones on everybody's TV and they could hear house. everybody yeah. cheer and pipe it all yes. back in. Yeah, I don't think yeah. that's a good idea, yeah. but, um, but if, if yeah. you haven't gotten uh, learned all the skills that it takes to hit singles and doubles and all that kind of stuff, when the time comes, when the opportunity comes to hit that home run, I don't believe you'll have the talent stack to take advantage of it. Mm. I've seen it. You, it slips through people's fingers. You won't have the take, momentum to take advantage of or, it. Or the knowledge or the yeah. network or the advisors, uh, you know, you all have the, the things You won't have the confidence. The, you won't have the guts. Right, confidence. Yeah. You, you don't know. So, you know, you need to be able to just act and you need to be able to small business as a verb and really take action when those opportunities come up. So, um, so you're here to hear first. We are all about small business action, and uh, we're going to continue to focus on that going forward. There might be a small business guide in the future. I, I'm totally going to uh, be a hypocrite here because I started the episode saying, you know, like we talk about this, this, you know, pie in the sky stuff, sort of the big picture stuff. But really, we want to talk about specific things you can do. And my favorite takeaway from this episode is this last one from you, which is definitely a big picture thing. It's, I mean, it, it is, is and it isn't, but, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But <laughs> so, yeah, it's good. This is great, it's man. Up, man. I'm glad we, uh, I'm glad we did this. I hope you're glad we did this. Look, tell us, we, we are uh, very shallow people. Okay. And so we like to know that what we're doing here is helping even just one person out there. So if you're the one hearing this, and it might just be you, I mean, it's probably not, but it might be. Maybe we've crafted this particular MP3 just for you and nobody else gets the same version. So send us a note, feedback at businessshow.co. You don't even have to put content in the message. Just say thanks in the subject line and hit send. We would love that from you. If you add, if you want to add more in the body, that's great. And if you have a business tip, an action tip that you want to share, put it in the body of the message. Hit send. That's feedback at businessshow.co. Yes, there's three S's in a row there. Businessshow.co. Send us an email. We would love to hear from you. That's what I got for today, Shannon. You got anything else, that's, man? That's good for me, man. All I'm right. gonna, as soon as we're done here, I'm getting back to, I'm going to go small business some more. I'm going to go small <laughs> business some more too. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much for listening, folks. Thanks for checking out our sponsors, directmailmac.com slash SBS, smilesoftware.com slash podcast. And uh, make sure you keep living that charmed life because that's what it's all about. 